I put this question, I, I ask a lot of my students this, and I ask them, what type of profession do you think you're in? And um, I also say, well, what type of profession do you think physios are in? Uh, what type of profession are you or are you doing? And more often than not, they'll say, well, I'm a physiotherapist or I'm a sports practitioner. But what does that mean? Ultimately, it means that you're in the profession of happiness. You're taking a person from point A to point B, point A being something that they're struggling with, they're in pain, they can't train, or they can't compete because of few issues. Um, it might be musculoskeletal, for example. And what you've gone and done is identified that and then said, okay, well, you're at point A now, we want to get to point B, this is what I've identified as some things that I can help you with. Once we achieve that, we're going to get to point B. And point B is happiness for that person. Point B is what that person wants to achieve. So when and one day if we cross paths and um, if, uh, if I'm able to talk to you one day and I say, well, what kind of profession are you in? Uh, well, you'll, you'll know the answer, but uh, we are in this profession. We are in this profession to make people happy uh, because they've gone from not being able to do something to be able to do something. And for a lot of people, when people can't achieve what they want or they're limited, there's a lot of unhappiness. And that is one of the major reasons they come and see you. <clears throat> A lot of young therapists um, who I've mentored, uh, who I've worked with, um, especially um, therapists who have been one or two years out of university, they have a lot of information. There's almost an information overload. Um, and trying to grasp at the things that would make a difference, they think, they ultimately think, oh my God, am I helping Am I actually helping my patient? Am I actually helping my athlete? If you're unsure at any stage, and look, there, there are lots of practitioners who go through this within the first two, uh, first two to three years, and I must say, um, it does get easier, okay? Um, it had happened to me, um, and I was able to work through it because I was ultimately looking at Two things. One, am I being ethical? Uh, ethical means that I'm not going to do any harm. Everything that I want to do with this athlete or this patient is to make a difference for them. Um, even when I first started, it wasn't me trying to get the best results in the shortest period of time. I didn't have the skill level. That slowly improved, but I was trying to make a difference. The difference was me trying to make um, make them happier. And if your goal ultimately is to take them from point A to point B and you can make them happier, well, you're not trying to do any harm. And the, the fact that you're trying to take them on that journey and you know your limitations, you know uh, what to do, what not to do, and you're trying to make their lives better, you've then gone and addressed these two things. <clears throat> you're being ethical, okay, because you're working by the guidelines as a therapist. And secondly, you're not doing any harm, because deep down what you're trying to do is to make a difference for them. So being competent means, one of the things about being competent was when you are unsure and during the early stages of uh, any physiotherapist, any uh, sports medicine practitioner, uh, there are vital pressures. There's a lot of pressure from the outside to uh, get the results. And, you know, the athletes want results. They want it in such a short period of time. You're not sure whether you're doing the right thing. But think about it. Think about whether what you're doing is trying to make a difference and you're trying to help them 
you're trying to make them happier and if you can answer yes to all those questions well you're, you're on the right track and <clears throat> usually if you're unsure one of the biggest things I say is speak to a senior therapist okay go to a senior therapist and say this is where they are now this is where they want to get to am I taking the right steps and just having that senior therapist look at that and then respond will be very helpful for you as a young practitioner um, as a young practitioner uh, you might be in that situation but there are a lot of senior therapists as well who um, are unsure of what steps to take because it might be an athlete that they uh, or a situation they're not used to it might be a different sport that they that they haven't uh, looked into um, I'm one of the first people to put my hand up and say um, and I go back to my team and I'll say well guys what do you think um, are we on track here am I on track here to do uh, what I want with this person and um, having that collaboration uh, is uh, is very helpful so um, that's something to uh, always keep in the back of your mind to be competent uh, there are times you'll feel unsure but um, there are ways to get around it.